I'm delighted to be joined by Anastasia. Hi. <laughs> how, are you, how are you doing? Uh, good, good. How are you? Not too shabby. I'm, I'm wishing it was a little sunnier or, or good weather has uh, disappeared with uh, the, the last few weeks. It was uh, March, April and May seem a long time ago. But um, c'est la vie. So maybe um, you could tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, what you're, you're studying at DCU. Right. So I am currently pursuing a master's in translation studies at DCU with English and Spanish. And yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you told me just before we began recording. So you speak four languages. Yes, I do. And obviously, language is something that you're interested in, given your your master's. But um, how did you come to, to choose to study this particular master's at DCU? Well, I was searching for various programs all over the world. To be fair, I've applied to Ireland. I've applied to Sweden, to the US as well. And I was looking for something where I could broaden my language knowledge as well as uh, gather the information and acquire skills for my future profession in the language service uh, field. And uh, DCU was offering a very good um, course module for translation studies and as well an opportunity to either do a work placement or a dissertation, which I thought was Quite a brilliant idea. So yeah, um, DCU just caught my eye and since I've never been to Ireland, I've decided that this is a very good place to start. And despite not having been to Ireland, you had told me that you, you were interested in Ireland. <laughs> yes, I was. I was. Um, one of my most vivid Irish memories, I would say, was actually watching the 1996 uh, recording of The Lord of the Dance and Michael Flatley being my absolute hero and celebrity crush. Uh, <laughs> quite frankly, wanted to study uh, and see what Irish tap dancing was like. Ended up just switching to tap dancing and doing that for 10 years, but my fascination with the country and the folklore and the language itself as well. I do have at home a book of short stories and sort of limerick type of things with an English translation and a Russian explanation of how the syntax works. So I would say linguistically uh, also captivated my eye and the fascination just never stopped growing. Well, that's, uh, you know, fascinating to hear, I suppose, the impact of uh, Michael Flatley and Irish dancing around the world. And certainly the, the Irish language is, is a fascinating language and the way things are structured. But I suppose take yourself back then to maybe, say, around this time last year and, and getting ready to, to come to, to Dublin and that, that move and initially, I suppose, settling in. What was the transition like? So my initial process started in actually October 2018 when I just applied to courses and was patiently waiting for a response, whether I would get a, an unconditional offer or not. Um, and I did. I accepted my offer in January and uh, was fully accepted to DCU in July. But my visa process started in May and uh, since I am a native of St. Petersburg, Russia, I had to apply in advance and the process took me three months. <laughs> as ridiculous as that <laughs> timeline sounds, it did take me three months to get a student visa to Ireland, but once was, everything was said and done, I arrived on the 4th of September last year and I gave myself a week to explore the country with my parents because they have been here before and for them this is this was kind of a return to memories and seeing how the country has changed in the 25 years that they haven't been here and uh, showing me their stomping grounds and then I moved into campus accommodation 
11th of September, the day I was allowed to come in and the rest is history. <laughs> I'm glad you had the opportunity to explore a, a little bit before classes started. And I suppose then thinking about the, the academic side of things a little bit and, and college life, what was, what, were, what was maybe the first semester like in terms of did you join many clubs or societies or, or how did you settle into campus life? And in terms of the academics, how did you find that? I absolutely loved being on campus. It was my home away from home. Uh, although I can't really say <laughs> I know where home is at this moment anymore. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the apartment that we shared was for five people with a common lounge and a kitchen. And it was quite an international crowd and we bonded really well with my flatmates, two of them I live with now uh, in Stony Batter, actually. And yeah, campus resident, I've never lived on campus before. I did my whole bachelor's degree while living at home. So it was definitely an experience and something you had to get used to. But having people there who were also experiencing this for the first time and experiencing the country with you was quite calming and helps you find your own peace as well. And then in terms of clubs and societies, I did join two. One was the Spanish Society and the second was, was the Rock Climbing Society. I was unfortunately not able to attend a single event of the Spanish Society because it coincided with some of my classes. But the Rock Climbing Society, I was frequently visiting <laughs> on Tuesdays and Thursdays and quite enjoyed rock climbing and getting back into it because I've done it as a kid and growing up in the States as well. So yeah, I kept myself busy and was quite thankful that I was able to participate in such societies. That's good to hear. I think societies can be a really kind of wonderful way to I suppose, get to know both the university and other people, and, and especially maybe when it's something that you loved previously, but uh, hadn't had the opportunity to, to do in a while. And I suppose then kind of looking at the, the way in which obviously uh, the COVID situation happened in Ireland, and then classes had to go online from March. And what was what was that experience like for you to 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 have to to move to a virtual learning environment it was it was an experience <laughs> it was definitely one uh, I would say that I found it quite hmm, I'm trying to think of a word which would describe because I didn't find it difficult uh, because our classes did require a lot of extracurricular reading that uh, being in class was more of a discussion place mm -hmm. rather than um, active study place, I would say. Mm. To be fair, I, I can't say that it was a difficult transition for me. I know some of my uh, peers found it quite hard to stay motivated and to find the will to even attend classes at one point. But for me, it was more of a necessity. It was something that was, had to be done for the benefit of us students and the professors and everybody out there because this pandemic was such an unprecedented thing and nobody really counted on it. And I have to say that DCU handled this transition really, really well. All classes were pro provided with Zoom links. We had active communication with professors. Everybody was open and um, ready to listen to any concerns and uh, provide you with any feedback that you needed. So I would say, yeah. That's good to hear. And I suppose in terms of the motivation, given your love of, of, of language and your interest in it, that probably be helped, uh, helped you in, in that transition to, to the online learning world. 
and I suppose now as you're you're kind of coming towards the the end of of your your masters and what what do you hope for the future oof <laughs> hopefully I can finish my dissertation in time <laughs> and finish it successfully <laughs> do all of the necessary research and do the write-ups because as I said, DCU and this course particularly offered a choice between a work placement and a dissertation. And I hope to um, secure a placement. However, I was strongly advised against unpaid internships and in the end just opted out, switching last minute to a dissertation and submitting my proposal. So for me currently, the objective is to do that well, do all of my research, and I'm really passionate about the topic that I'm writing about. So, yeah, currently, academically, that is on my agenda, I would say. But in terms of work, I'm currently going through interviews and looking at different job opportunities in Ireland and seeing what the market is really like because as a recent graduate emerging into this kind of economy and this kind of a working environment, it is quite challenging, I would say, to be able to find a place and a job, especially in the language sector. Okay, well, fingers crossed that something will emerge. It's it's certainly a unique time to, to be graduating, but Hopefully, given you know the the way in which things have gone and and the connectivity that we have seen, I would hope that maybe you know in in terms of the language sector there would be that that need for for language graduates. So, um, fair play to you for putting the effort in and and already getting out there searching whilst uh, you know finishing up your dissertation. Well, in terms then of you know if if thinking about the new students who will be arriving uh, into to DCU and from your own experience, like what advice would you have for the incoming cohort of students? Are there things that they should look out for? Are there things that they should particularly, you know, try places they should visit or things they should try? Oh, um, in terms of like words, wisdomous words, I would say just do it. It's as cliche as that sounds. Dive into the environment. Be as open as you can to the many possibilities that DCU and Ireland has to offer. Um, put yourself out there. Explore. For example, I was part of the Erasmus um, Society in DCU and they offered weekend trips with them to House and Malahide and many other fun places. So that is definitely something that you should partake in. And read, follow Instagram pages, try to learn and write down as much as you can before coming here in terms of interesting places to visit, things to try, Concerts to attend, also a great place to see what it's like because I know the, the entertainment environment is quite different in each and every country. So it's definitely something that I would rec recommend doing is going to comedy clubs in Ireland, one, the Comedy Crunch, the International Bar. Something on Baker Street always pops up, which is always quite pleasant to <laughs> enjoy. And yeah, take the time to wander around the city and take a trip to Galway or Cork or even if you have time. I know my friends invited me up to Donegal. So yeah, just make friends, explore and enjoy. It truly is the time to take it all in and make many fond memories for the future. I think that's really 
really good advice. I, I think especially in terms of comedy, I think comedy can be a great window into a culture and to have the opportunity to get along to some comedy shows. And there's lots of free comedy out there as well. So it's not like people have to spend a fortune and uh, loved your advice to, to visit Cork. Uh, definitely would advocate people visiting Cork, my, my home place. And Galway and the West is absolutely stunning. I mean, there, there is no place in, in the world like it. So I, I think, uh, you know, we, we've covered a lot of ground and I just want to say thank you again for taking the time to speak with me and look all the best for the future. Thank you very much.